As we do as airmen, we bring attitude to the fight. It's one of our biggest weapons. Just the fact that they get out there and give it their, their all every single day in austere conditions in, in some cases is really important. It's important that, the, that they not only provide air power uh, and deliver air power across this theater that's reliable that our joint partners rely on, it's also important that they defend the NATO alliance and they're a big part of that defense whether they're forward on the eastern flank right now or whether they're in their main operating bases. What I really see 3rd Air Force right now is a way to bridge some of the things that the staff uh, is working on across the staff, operations, plans, intelligence, and making sure that the voice of the wing is heard within the staff so that they understand the realities of what our airmen are working with uh, on the ground, whether it's in Africa or Romania or the UK, wherever it is. Uh, as well as understand uh, the, the context and the higher headquarters uh, thought process and be able to uh, communicate that down to the wings, both the wing commanders and all the way down to the, uh, the youngest airmen. It's not lost on me that uh, in many cases we're asking them to do really, really tough jobs. Um, and we're asking them to do it not often resourced to 100% or manned to 100%. You know, the challenges that, that Third Air Force is facing is really the, the same challenges that the command is facing. And so as we, uh, we look as the operational environment uh, and the strategic environment, for that matter, has changed a great deal uh, over the past year from where we were a year ago with uh, primarily Russia's invasion of Ukraine. Um, NATO looks different. Uh, our role in NATO looks different how we support uh, Ukraine and, and, uh, and compete um, against a, a near peer adversary uh, like Russia, as well as learn from what's happening and be able to, to provide support is, uh, is drastically different. And so the, the challenge is how to plan for the long term of that and create sustainable ways to, to do that while maintaining uh, the, uh, the cohesion of the NATO alliance. Um, you know, that, that's, not, uh, that's not something we take lightly, certainly here, um, that that cohesion happens uh, at grassroots level with our airmen, whether that's training exercises, whether that's interoperability, or whether that's real world ops. And so those, that's the challenge, is to continue that. Uh, one of the challenges that uh, is for the most part in the rear view mirror is the impact of COVID. Um, and I think that uh, we're still feeling the impacts of that, you know, as, uh, as we drew down a lot of those interactions, a lot of those exercises over the past couple of years, getting those ramped back up is something that is, is, uh, is really important and prioritizing that. Because at the end of the day, there's only so many hours in the day and there's only so many resources and so much bandwidth for our wings to really invest our time and our money and our resources in areas that have, have big dividends. I'm happy to, uh, to be in command of 3rd Air Force right now. Uh, great mission, great theater, awesome, awesome uh, group of airmen. Thanks for what they do every day. Um, you know, I thank that for their families as well um, because I know that it's tough to live overseas and in a lot of, a lot of cases, especially on, our, on the, uh, the uh, AFRICOM side, uh, these are deployed airmen from across our Air Force uh, that are in austere locations away from their families. And so uh, to pass my thanks on to their families as well for, for every bit that they do. Uh, it's significant, especially overseas.